forget the wedding bells. Valentine's means soft snow and unicorns at Loveland. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. I pronounce you husband and wife, and God bless you. It was a beautiful day for a wedding at Loveland Ski Area, where dozens of couples gathered at 12,000 feet for the 29th annual Mountaintop Matrimony. Riding ptarmigan chair to meet his wife of 20 years was Carl from Golden. I think she's going to say yes. Renewing their vows were two couples from Denver dressed as neon unicorns. And with love in the air, we had one question for them. Do you remember your first kiss? Nicole does. It was her husband. It was this guy <laughs> in high school in a swimming pool. Another unicorn, Leo, remembers his first, and he is still making up for it. My first kiss was actually with her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story there. Aaron and Megan from Westminster had to think for a second. God, I don't even know that I remember my first kiss. <laughs> I was in a car when I was 16. <laughs> and Alex from Portland might still have cooties from his first. Back in preschool, Chelsea chased me into our classroom and planted one on me and I was terrified. The ceremony just wrapped up after an opera reception at the base area. Loveland is now one step away from adding 580 acres of inbounds snowcat terrain at Dry Gulch. John Sellers with Loveland. And we're very excited about it. Been working with the Forest Service very closely on this, and this is going to be uh, a big thing for us. That expansion to the east of Chair 8 now goes through public comment and final review by the Forest Service. But Sellers is confident they will get the thumbs up by April. It'll be a totally separate operation. We're still working through some of the details, but we look forward uh, to sharing those with people um, for next season. If approved, paid cat tours at Dry Gulch begin next season. Two skiers have died in two separate incidents this week, one at Vail yesterday, one at Snowmass Wednesday. The Vail Daily reports 46-year-old Jason Varnish of New Jersey died in Blue Sky Basin yesterday. Cause of death is pending an autopsy. On Wednesday, an unidentified 83-year-old died after tumbling 22 feet over the lip of the Snowmass superpipe. Ski Patrol found him unresponsive at the base of the pipe. No word on how he fell. He was wearing a helmet. So far this season, seven people have died in bounds, including four this month alone. Crystal 93 reported last week that A Basin is replacing the 41-year-old Pally chair. But don't worry, the Pally spirit ain't going nowhere. Catherine Fuller with the Basin. We considered a detachable high-speed quad for a hot minute and then decided that the poly lift should continue to match the poly terrain. So it'll be another two-chair. Basin throws a farewell party in April where you have the chance to own a piece of Pally. We're going to auction off several chairs for local charities. Seems like a cool thing for Pally to give back to the community that's loved it so much. Chair replacement begins after the ski season for opening day next season. The Summit School Board last night officially passed a pay raise for employees, 3.25% for teachers and staff, and 0.75% for administrators and exempt employees. That's an increase of nearly $1,200 for all teachers starting this school year. Money comes from a $920,000 mill levy reapproved by voters this past November. On Cinco de Mayo 2007, Brandon Adams' life changed forever when he lost both legs to an explosive in Iraq. It's just part of uh, the job and part of the the deal that we all know, and it was just my time to get hit. It was the Idaho native's second tour of duty as an Army engineer and the end of his military career. His second career started 2008 in Breckenridge when he fell in love with adaptive ski cross racing known as Mono X. I won a couple of silver medals in X Games and got to have a, some crazy experiences there in Aspen and I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't hurt. On February 15th, tomorrow, Adam's life is again changed forever when he, his wife, and two young daughters get a custom wheelchair-ready home in their dream town of Silverthorne. This is such a generational gift. You know, this house is going to be forever in my family. The Adams home is paid for in full by Tunnel to Towers, a national nonprofit that has given wounded veterans $250 million, including 54 mortgage-free homes. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be a truly surreal moment when uh, we're pulling up to the house. It's going to be, uh, I don't even know what to think about it yet. Tunnel 2 Towers also paid off the mortgage for Ken Jones, a Summit Fire and EMS veteran who died fighting a fire at Copper in December. 
In sports, all Colorado teams are off today, back tomorrow when the Avalanche play the Kings in Colorado Springs for an outdoor arena game at Air Force Academy. And in local sports, brought to you by Wilderness Sports in Dillon. Today, Tigers Alpine Ski Team races slalom at Loveland. Wrestling is in Broomfield for regionals. Hockey plays Liberty in Colorado Springs, and girls swimming and diving has day one of the state meet in Thornton. Tomorrow, swimming has day two of states. Boys and girls basketball plays Eagle Valley in Gypsum. Hockey faces Stanley Lake at home, and the Nordic Ski Team races Classic in Steamboat Springs. And it is day one of the Pabst Colorado Pond Hockey Tournament in Silverthorne. The tourney continues tomorrow and Sunday with games from 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. tomorrow and 7.30 to 12.30 Sunday. Spectating is free and open to the public. Phil Lindemann, Crystal 93 News.